Hey guys, welcome back to our CCNA routing and switching series. In this episode, we're going to go ahead and take a look at two a very important terminology when you are working with not just with CCNA in general with any kind of network. And these two terminologies are called broadcast domain and a collision domain. In the previous episode, we have kind of briefly touched around these two type of domains. But in this episode, we're going to go ahead and explore or take a look at these two terminology a little bit in great detail. These two terminologies are so important that you need to remember them always and don't try to skip them. I would say you watch the this video from end to end so you will have a better understanding of what is a broadcast and what is a collision domain. And for this series, I have not written any document that I plan to follow. In this series, we will go ahead and follow a document on Cisco's network written by a person named Gary. So all the credit goes to Gary for such a great document. So we will go ahead and follow that document. And based on that document, I will go ahead and explain you what is a broadcast domain and what is a collision domain. So let's go ahead and uh, let me just share the document that Gary has written. So all the credit goes to Gary and you can also find this document on Cisco Learning Network and the title says a broadcast and a collision domain created by Gary. So all credit goes to again to Gary. So now there are a few things before we really understand what is a broadcast or a collision domain. There are a few things that we need to remember and some of these things we have covered in our past episodes. A broadcast. If you remember a broadcast, a broadcast means a message sent to all devices onto the same segment and the broadcast happens at the layer 2 so that's why it says a data link layer if you remember collision collision was primarily seen when we had the half duplex devices or in the case when we had hubs so again a collision when more than one device transmits the data same time on shared media the packets collide and data becomes corrupted and after a random period of time devices have to retransmit the data so because the packets are colliding and that is called a collision and we had seen this collision problem during the half duplex and when we were talking about the hubs on the other hand a broadcast domain broadcast sending a message to everybody on that same network segment while a broadcast domain what it says all devices that a broadcast message reaches on the data link layer so the devices, when you send a broadcast and the broadcast, let's say, is able to reach 200 device, that reachability or that whole area is called your broadcast domain. A network can have more than one broadcast domain. So when it says a network can have more than one broadcast domain, you can think of when we were talking about the multi-story buildings and we were creating the LANs, each floor is a LAN segment and each LAN segment can have a unique broadcast domains and what it says a broadcast domain is delimited by devices that stop broadcast messages so there are devices that kind of controls your broadcast hey we don't want this broadcast from going from one floor to the another floor and we can use certain device that would just stop those broadcast messages and one of the very popular device to do that is your router and we'll go ahead and take a look at that now, we talk about the collision domain. We just know that when more than one device is trying to send the data and the packets kind of collide. So that's what, again, the collision domain. Anywhere within a network, a collision can occur. The limits of a collision domains are marked by the devices that break up the collision domain. So the devices that break up the collision domain, again, that is just simply called your collision domain. Now, if you take a look at the network devices and what are their role. So let's talk about the switch. Switch had over a period of time, they went ahead and replaced the hubs. The problem with the hubs, half duplex and there were a lot of collision. So the switch expands broadcast domain and break up collision domain. So when you use a switch, it is essentially increasing your broadcast boundaries. But at the same time, it breaks up the collision domain. So now what it says, every device attached to a switch. Now a switch could have 10 port, 20 port, 24 ports. So each port technically, every device attached to a switch belongs to same broadcast domain 
and this is because every port on a switch belongs to the same broadcast domain. If we were to attach another switch to original switch, so what are we doing? When we connect one switch to the another switch, we are doing stacking or we could be forming a cluster depending on that. Every single device attached to that second switch will also belong to the same broadcast domain and that is in the case of stacking. In other words, every time you add a switch to a network, you expand the broadcast domain. So now let's say you are creating a LAN segment in a three-story building. So now on the first floor, you created a LAN segment and on the second floor, you also created another LAN segment and on the third floor also you created the third LAN segment. Now you want all those three floor to have, be part of the same collision domain. In that case, we can go ahead and start connecting the stacking port of the switches with each other. So you can go ahead and create, attach the first floor switch with the second floor and the third floor. That way all of those LAN segments becomes one larger LAN segment. And now our broadcast domain, which was only limited to each floor, now because we have connected all the switches together, the broadcast domain boundary has increased from every single floor to a whole building. So now the whole building is one single broadcast domain. That means a PC which is sitting on first floor, let's say trying to send a message to everybody. Now that message will be broadcasted to everybody on first floor, second floor and third floor. Now the good part, okay, it's a single broadcast domain, but if you recall the broadcast brings up its own challenges. Now everybody is getting the same copy of a message. That means your network is being bombarded with a lot of these broadcast packets. So something that we need to keep in mind when you're designing a network, do you want to create such a large broadcast domain or you want to keep smaller broadcast domain? On the other hand, a switch breaks up collision domain because each port on its its own collision domain. So every single port on a switch is called its own collision domain. While in the case of hub, all ports belong to the same collision domain. So now when you are using a switch, well, let's say you have a switch, eight port switch, and on the eight port switch, you go ahead and connect eight device. So every single device belongs to its own collision domain. That means the collision can only happen or can occur between the device and that switch port, not between one device and the other device. Because now the switch is in middle of these two devices and that's the whole idea behind the switch. The switches will go ahead and break up your collision domain. There are another type of device which are called bridges, which expands your broadcast domain and break up the collision domain, somewhat like your switches. The bridge is just like a switch, that's what it says. It expands broadcast domain and breaks up collision domain. Each port on a bridge is also its own collision domain. But in the case of hub, it expands both broadcast and a collision domain. A hub will expand a broadcast domain just like a switch does, but as opposed to a switch, it does not break up a collision domain because every single port on a hub belongs to the same collision domain. That means if you are using a hub, there are more chances of collision happening versus if you go ahead and use a switch. That's why it says in other words, a frame that came in or out on one port can collide with any other frame on any other hub support. So that was the problem and that we had seen during the hub and the half duplex communication. That's why it says imagine yourself adding hubs to a network every time you add a hub, both the broadcast and the collision domain get expanded. That is the reason hubs are completely obsolete because we, with the hub, there are two problems. One is definitely the broadcast and the bigger problem is the collision where your data gets corrupted and the devices have to retransmit. So that kind of, you know, poses another challenge. Now there is another type of device and network, which was your router. So the, the purpose of the router breaks up both broadcast and collision domain. So now the router is really a cool device that will go ahead and break your both broadcast and collision domain. So now in the case of switch, we saw that every single port on a switch belongs to its own, own collision domain, but it was the same broadcast domain. How do we break that? So router each interface on a router, its own broadcast and collision domain. So every single individual port on a router has its own broadcast as well as a collision domain. That means, the router stop broadcast messages, they will not route a broadcast message from one broadcast domain to another broadcast domain. Let's say there are two switches connected to a router. Behind switch A, 
you have one network segment and behind switch two you have segment number b or two now let's say there's a broadcast happens within segment a behind the switch a when it reaches the router router will go ahead and see take a look at okay hey this is a broadcast packet and because i'm a router i am not allowed to forward these broadcast messages or it will not go ahead and route this broadcast message from one domain to the another domain and router will go ahead and drop that broadcast message on its that interface and that's how it breaks up the both broadcast as well as the collision domain now let's take a look at these cool pictures that gary had put together the broadcast domain so now if you see here the yellow circle kind of indicates the broadcast domain look at the picture below you can identify four different broadcast domain and if you remember the broadcast domain is what where the device can do a send a broadcast message so in the middle we have a router and we just learned that every single individual interface of a router belongs to its own broadcast as well as a collision domain so this router has four interface the interface on this side interface number two three and four and because there are four interfaces and each interface has its own broadcast and collision domain that's why you see this big yellow circle that has multiple devices it's one big broadcast domain there are two devices in this domain there is a one device in this domain one device in this domain so these devices have their own broadcast as well as collision domain and now we have another set of devices which are connected to this interface and this is also another broadcast domain so that's why you can see the router really breaks up the broadcast so if there is a message if there is a broadcast happening in this area one let's say and the pc1 sends a broadcast message when it reaches the router router will not go ahead and forward that broadcast message to any of the area two three or four because the whole idea behind the router is to break or to stop that broadcast message flooding the rest of the network that is why each interface on a router belongs to its own broadcast as well as collision domain and these are some of the exercises that you can go ahead and read now let's take a look at the collision domain now we know the collision domain if we talk about a switch in case of a hub it's one large collision domain but in the case of a bridge and a switch each individual port has its own collision domain that's why if you take a look at this particular picture the green circle represents the collision domain so in this area one if you see there are couple set of devices but they are connected via a hub we know the set of the hub has the all the ports of hub belongs to the same collision domain that's why the pc1 the pc0 pc1 and pc2 they are all connected to the hub and because they are connected to the hub they are part of the same collision domain but if you see this hub is connected to a switch and we know on a switch every individual port is its own collision domain that's why the collision is restricted only to this particular port so between this hub and this switch this is one particular collision domain now there are other switches or there are other devices which are connected to this particular switch so we have a device in area 2 area 3 now the area 2 there's a pc the collision domain is only restricted to this pc and in the case of area 3 the collision domain is only restricted to 3 if i have to look from the perspective of broadcast domain the broadcast domain could be bigger because they are connected to a switch and the switch it's like one large broadcast domain now on this switch there's on this port we have a router connected and again every individual port on a switch is on collision domain so we have one collision domain here between this switch and this router now by default router breaks both the broadcast domain as well as the collision domain so now on this router there are three interface on one interface we have a pc connected so the broadcast or the collision domain is only restricted to this area 5 same in the case of area 6 now on the area 7 with this router we have another switch connected so the collision domain is only restricted but on this particular interface because again each interface is its own collision domain now with this switch switch we have a pc connected so that become this particular collision domain now with this switch we have a bridge connected so again this is a bridge so the collision domain is only on this particular link and to this bridge we have a pc connected and so our collision domain is only limited to this particular area so if you take a look at just if we go through this particular exercise it says okay hey collision domain number one so if you take a look at this collision domain number it says all the ports on the hub belong to the same collision domain is it true or false it's true the reason we learned that the hub all the ports on a hub are part of the same collision domain and that is the reason this particular statement is true 
Now, the second thing also is true because each port on a switch is its own collision domain. That is why if you see on this switch, there are four devices connected, one, two, three, four. Each interface has its own collision domain. Now, if you take a look at the uh, domain number two, three, and four, each port on a switch is its own collision domain. We know that is true. Each interface on a router belongs to one broadcast domain. That is also true because they don't forward the broadcast by default. They kind of breaks the both broadcast as well as the collision domain. And that's that these are the some of the other a thing that you can go ahead and read about. So again, uh, this is very important concept that you need to remember what is a broadcast domain and what is a collision domain. Again, just to summarize the broadcast domain, all devices that a broadcast message reaches at the data link layer, which is also your layer two, within a network is called a broadcast domain. A network can have more than one broadcast domain and a broadcast domain is delimited by devices that stop broadcast messages, which is our router. But in case of a collision domain, everywhere within a network where a collision can occur. So collision occurs when two devices are trying to send the data at the same time and the packet collide, that's when the collision occurs. So that's why it says anywhere within a network where a collision can occur, the limits of a collision domain are marked by the devices that break up the collision domain and that devices like your switch, your bridges and as well as your router, they are pretty good at breaking up the collision domain. So these are the terminologies that you guys to uh, keep in mind. And remember, whenever you are working with any kind of network, when you're designing or deploying a network, keep the broadcast as well as collision domain in mind uh, before you do anything else. So that'll be all for this episode. I will see you guys in next episode. Thank you.